Alrighty guys, welcome to game number three, CDC Gaming versus IG Vitality. It's time, game three, the decider. We've seen base race, we've seen all kinds of clowny fun stuff. We're gonna see a bit more of it, I hope, here in game number three. As uh, we hop ourselves in, uh, eHome versus IG Vitality, the series that follows, which was scheduled to start five minutes ago, but obviously IG Vitality can't be playing two matches at once, so I assume that match will wait for this to finish. So if you're waiting or hoping to catch eHome in action, uh, that will come after this game three, I can only imagine. But right now, CDC versus IG Vitality. I'm Gods. Joining me is MRP. What do you think, man? Game three? Are you excited? Are we going to see OD for the first time today? Has he been that banned be... on, in all these games so far? He, yeah, he has okay. been first faced by... I'm not sure if it's the exact same team Wild. every time, but... Looks like he'll slip through the first phase completely, and the Lion and the Vengeful Spear are going to be given some attention uh, in that early phase. Venge has been a uh, linchpin uh, of both lineups, or both teams in their lineups for so far in this one, so uh, going to be prioritized once again. Uh, Invoker this time going to be in the ha hands of Fran, excuse me, as opposed to Super, so we'll see how he handles that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he's... Fran's been pretty impressive so far throughout the, yeah. this series. I even... Uh, going back to, to to game number one, so definitely a uh, player to look out for here, and we'll see CDC Lion Nature's Prophet. So the Nature's Prophet kind of like a no-brainer first pick these days. Like no surprises. Mm -hmm. The Lion is like kind of one of those things where some teams like him, some teams don't. Um, and I think it's just like off, you generally want to try and pick up a sort support in, support in your first two picks, unless there's like some really big combo or duo that you want. Yeah, certainly. So it leaves uh, a lot of variability left for your draft in terms of uh, the cores and therefore the theme. And already the Lion going to be a great support to set up for for the Nature's Prophet TPing in. Uh, they're going to remove one of the best heroes in dealing with the Nature's Prophet split push as well uh, in the Bat Rider. So he's going to be taken out of the pool. Yeah. Um, we'll see if they're looking to split the map up and maybe drag this one out a little bit later. Uh, Lion, a, a great hero to sit behind those heroes and counter initiate uh, if they go that route, but. Batrider ban this early definitely makes sense with a Furion, but still is a little bit curious. Um, uh, unless IG V played a lot more than I'm uh, than I'm privy to. And that's the thing. Like these teams probably been scrimming a bit now that they've got mm -hmm. their new rosters. They've got plenty of scrim partners. Is the is the good news with uh, all the new teams that have formed and a lot of the teams having like youth. Well, IG Vitality have their older team, I guess the IG squad. Uh, CDC have their youth squad as well as their Avengers squad. So there's plenty of scrim partners. Uh, as far as these scenes go, and we'll see uh, some interesting little bands coming out. The, like you mentioned, the Doom, and then we've got the Death Prophet plus Slark coming out from IG Vitality. Respect towards the Rabbit Slark going back yeah. to game number one. Two games um, in a row now as well. I mean, that's pretty much all that pick comes down to. It's not a bad pick here, but it's not like a, an mm -hmm. amazing pick here. It's at the same time, it doesn't like counter any of these things. And also perhaps signaling that IG Vitality aren't going to maybe have the best con control for it. They're not going to have like, the, they don't want to go into the Disruptor or some kind of AoE stun that can help lock them down, go through Shadow Dance. They've only got Avenge who is very unreliable against the slot. Yeah, it's not a hero early on that was was all that um, favored by a lot of the, the tier one teams, but it really, after the major has come into into favor, and as you mentioned, they may just not have enough to deal with him disable-wise, but uh, also just, Slark is somewhat of a quasi-global hero with the Shadow Dance passive, giving him all the move speed he has and generally builds into a mobility item, so uh, he definitely can contribute alongside uh, the Nature's Prophet um, and be somewhat omnipresent across the map but juggernaut pick is a is an early one for for igv uh has, does offer them a bit of wave clear a bit of push a bit of roshan potential with the ward and the venge on their side so definitely a good all-around pick all right remaining. we'll see what cdc respond with i always like sven against jug just having the sven as well Agreed. as Ursa. Um, having sven with the war cry Ursa is always yeah. good because you can arrange it just kind of negates it makes sure you have a frontline carry that's good against omni slash because there's some heroes who in typical games are great like a specter but you go up against a jug and suddenly you have no real way to escape or deal with mm -hmm. an omni slash so it's it matches up quite poorly so uh, i'd like to see something along those lines of one of those two heroes but there's other possibilities as well and cdc it kind of depends overall that you don't want to pick draft too much around countering ig vitality you want to get something that's yeah. going to suit you your team and create like a win condition for yourself Certainly, certainly. So, um, Sven though in in a in a vacuum, uh, very good against Juggernaut. Juggernaut is is one of the carries that can avoid manning up when he doesn't have to. So he's great against heroes like Life Stealer who need to man up um, because he can jump and use that Omni Slash. But with the War Cry, 
Uh, Sven can just stand there, pop his God Strength, wait for the Jugger to come out of Omni, and pretty much kill him off as long as he has life steal. Life steal, and also would have synergized well with the Nature's Prophet. But Gyrocopter looks like it, they're gonna assemble for some potentially some early five men here uh, from C deck side, and that is definitely something we've seen them capable of doing, and also pretty damn competent at it as well. So already assembled a uh, pretty scary team fight lineup right now, and uh, they're gonna give. Rabbit that gyrocopter over in the safe lane, which can maybe allow them to go a little bit more roam heavy uh, with this second support pickup. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, yeah, very sustainable carry just on his own. Doesn't necessarily uh, mm -hmm. need a lot of help in the lane because of his his laning strength. And I guess Sidey Vitality is still open as far as what they want for the elf lane, but there's nothing really that stands out as being like, oh, this hero is so good against gyro. Like, he'll do fine. Mm -hmm. um, made to see him go back for like the standard tide that worked for them. Some kind of team fight slash initiation. Will just work quite nicely. Uh, the Beastmaster is still available as well, which is always a, bit, I'd say probably one of the better options to just have in general. Helps catch yeah. Nature's Prophet, gives you a great initiation tool in the raw. Can help combo with an Invoker Sunstrike if you are going for that Exod Invoker. Although we saw the uh, Quaswex earlier from Fran. Uh, this is not going to happen at all. But just for theory crafting's sake, I actually really like a Centaur for IGV. Up against the call down and the lion, but yeah, Beastmaster. I mean, a lot more popular. I feel like some of these heroes just get forgotten about and not yep. necessarily that they're weak. But I, so is Centaur. I'm trying, I think it was Wings who played Centaur the other day, and I was I was hyped, man. I, I love seeing Centaurs. That's that's one of my my favorite heroes to watch and cast. Yeah, especially with the uh, if you're ever, ever able to get up the eggs, it's really fun to see. But. Night, uh, Beastmaster Hawk always going to be good. Invoker is eventually going to pick up Travels. Perhaps Jug yeah. gets them as well, but against the Nature's Prophet split push, uh, going to be really nice to have. We'll build a, a Necro Books himself. Speaking of push, though, this is a hero that, out of the three jungle heroes, seems to get the least attention. The Enigma, the Enchantress, and the and the Chen, but uh, he's, we've still seen him be very sp strong despite the, the nerfs yeah. to Hand of God recently. Yeah, the, the heals, like having a Hand of God plus Mech in a team fight when Omni Slash is splitting between a lot of heroes, gets largely negated. For solo kills, it's still obviously a very strong tool to have, but um, for CDC, I think this is something that you kind of talk about where you can have that kind of greedier or roaming support when you've got this Lion Gyrocopter lane, and Chen's going to kind of fit the bill. I don't even think Chen has to be that aggressive, ganking the lanes early on, can get like yeah. a fast level 5, level 6, then go for a push slash smoke rotation, and when you go for that smoke rotation, you've got a Nature's Prophet TP as well. So CDC are always going to have the numbers advantage. Even if IG Vitality are trying to anticipate it, camp their supports behind like an Invoker to protect him, or behind the Beastmaster, trying to defend that tower with a Nature's Prophet on, on top of the Chen, the the push in numbers is always going to favor CDC. At this point, they, they're going to force out a Dragonite ban just because of how strong the push would be. Death Prophet's already removed from the pool. Pugna doesn't seem all that great, although the Decrepify yeah. is nice up against the Omni Slash. Still into the Prime Aurora seems like a pretty scary pickup. There's still an OD in the pool who's just generally strong for that mid lane. Yeah. Doesn't really commit to the push, but um, still feels like there's a decent amount of options. I, I like Puck as well for C deck, but the Beastmaster, once again, makes that a little bit of a risky pick before he'll get something like a Lincoln's up. So um, still some options for IGV, but I, I feel like the, the Dragon Knight ban pretty warranted. Darkseer's going to come out. So IG Vitality, we looked at Beastmaster and thinking off laner, but they have Darkseer and Beastmaster. So one mm -hmm. of these is going to be kind of playing that jungle support role, be it the Iron Talon jungling Beastmaster. We saw kind of Fear pull out during the Shanghai Major. You could see the Darkseer just go into the jungle with the Iron Shell farming. So... Something a bit different from IG Vitality, a bit greedier, but they know that there's a chin on the other side. So it's like, you're going to pick a jungler, so are we. Yeah, they can afford the greed, as you mentioned. And the Surge, Ion Shell, Blade Fury is pretty damn scary as well if the Darkseer is in the Radiant Jungle uh, and can rotate over towards the Juggernaut's lane. So um, that's that's some nice synergy there. Vacuum into the Omni Slash. We see, we see a lot of Battle Fury builds, so that could be a definite scary combo as well as into the Invoker spells. Perhaps looking to uh, play around the fact there's limited catch. Ember Spirit's mm -hmm. going to be last picked for the mid lane. It kind of depends on the Invoker build. A Quaswix Invoker, one of the better counters to an Ember Spirit. You can instantly purge off the Flame Guide. You build into the yes. Orchid, which counters the Ember Spirit. But I don't think that was necessarily the intent. It's hard to say because like last time we looked, we saw the Invoker picked up by Vitae. We we're like, oh, it's probably a better Exordant game. And he went Quaswex had a pretty. And it was game. it was Fran picking up the yeah. the Quaswex as well. So yeah. 
as you mentioned, it's not the greatest Ember Spirit game. Uh, Super certainly a very competent player on this hero, so uh, definitely could work out with the early aggression. Uh, having the Chen behind him as well for sendbacks is really nice for the the Ember because you can remnant back into the fray afterwards. So it's it's a good pick. It's not exactly the pick I was expecting, and doesn't necessarily help the push, but it will help them to fight for sure. Yeah, it comes online in a good time and. Gives them a mid that can... Uh, they didn't actually have really an initiator in all the ways. Like, Lion needs a blink dagger before he becomes an initiator, but having the fire remnant forward allows, like, a hero like Ember to be... I wonder if he's going to build more into that fighting build, like, go for, like, mm -hmm. a phase or treads into a drum build um, or even if he goes for the boots of travel if he thinks, like, he wants to get a drums along the way, so... Curious to see what kind of build comes out from Super just because of the the way he fits into the CDC draft and also just what the CDC draft is in itself. Like, they're not necessarily looking to go... Uh, play towards the late game with a carry ember. Beastmaster is the one going to start off with the Iron Talon, okay. so it looks like uh, yep. Darkseer will be in lane, which is a little interesting just because it's a gyro. You can't pressure the carry as hard as if it were a melee one, but I mean, following you, he's going to find he's going to find his farm in lane regardless. And I think, yeah, you can't like so much. You can put a bit of pressure. It's a dual lane, so it's a, a lion gyro. Lion, not the best at zoning. He doesn't bully you as much as some other supports maybe sure. can like a disruptor witch doctor type i mean he's still pretty pretty damn good but um as long as he can get that level two get the surge up which he should be able to do it's a dual lane so you're not worried about the chen until much later on coming and getting right. you right so definitely the more survivable one you can sit up in lane soak up some xp definitely find some farm as well with the iron shells and looks like as we've seen pretty much in every game no one willing to uh, overextend themselves in this early engagement they'll just trade mid laner bounty runes yeah, IG Vitality certainly. did get a deep sentry ward down to block off one of Chen's camps, but I mean, this is this is the new age of Chen. There's plenty of camps to work with. There's a big camp if he wants it right by the secret shop. Uh, and Q may even head there first because he did see the enemy IG Vitality site in his jungle. Yeah, so Super is going to be up. It was, so it seems against an Exhort Invoker for this one, okay. and that'll help him out later on into the game, but it's going to make it very difficult in the early game. He does opt for the uh, PMS start, though and was pulled a couple tangles, so he can sustain through this right click at least early on. <laughs> to some extent, Fran just gonna keep right clicking him, but Fran taking aggro from three melee creeps himself takes a lot of damage here. He's brought out more tangos for himself, but they end up kind of trading equally as far as how much damage each side takes, even if it wasn't the <laughs> Ember Spirit doing the damage specifically. Yeah, super. A little bit low, but he will... Yeah, he won't have enough gold for a bottle for the next little bit, but they do have Q rotating in. Cold Snap oh. comes out, though. Does not miss from the high ground. He has a Sun Strike available. Super still hanging around so as to juke that and will Here comes the up. smoke, though, and I, I think Fran is not ready for this one. He needs to get back far enough. Has he juked the clap? I believe he's just far enough away. Yep, doesn't get caught. And Q being level 1 meant no penitence for the slow. If he just stayed... He backed off at the exact right time. If he stayed for mm -hmm. half a second longer, the Ursa would have cut him off. Yeah, have the cross regen going as well, so he'll be able to stand in lane. This will just be a little bit of a nuisance, the Hellbear Smasher, the Tomato Man. But other than that, pretty stagnant early game, and Falling You has been able to get a good amount out of this top lane already. 6 CS, he's going to have a wave come underneath his tower. Fortunately, will cancel his clarity, but he picks up his level 3 here. Yeah, out just a bit behind that on the Nature's Prophet. And Super very much just doing what we've seen from Beastmaster before in the jungle. Picks up a salve as well as Tango's. I'm not sure. I, I, I've probably been watching like what, like basically Fear's jungle pans, how he kind of played this mm -hmm. one. And uh, we'll be looking just to sit here as long as possible, use those boars to help get that fast level six, and then start roaming around the map for kills and then transition into towers. It was very much a let's smoke towards the safe lane, kill their off lane, and then take the T1 tower. That was like the general game plan around the, the Beastmaster that we saw from EG. Carter gonna have to throw out an earth spike top lane, following you trying desperately to pull this conqueror towards his lane. Yeah, but the surge will be able to do it. But... He's got soaring money soon, and then this this lane gets a whole lot easier. Uh, this lane gets a bit tricky with the lion taking the aggro from the creep wave away from the neutral camp. Yeah, we're gonna get zoned out pretty effectively. Bot lane and dogfight's gonna do a little bit of pulling in the meantime. So fairly stagnant. In the early game, Tornado going to come out mid, and Fran's going to have to expend a cold snap just to cancel the channeling on that, as it is a big pool down, so yeah. that'll give him a little breathing room. And that's, I think, still fine for Fran. Like, he had the mod. He hasn't actually been throwing Sunstrike. The problem is, like, when you use a Sunstrike or two early on and don't get much out of him, suddenly you're sitting on, like, 
20% mana pool, which you mm -hmm. don't have. Uh, and then you don't have, like, access to, to use spells liberally in lane. Like, you, you may have mana for a cold snap, but if you go for a kill, you won't have a sunstrike to follow it up. So just maintaining a decent-sized mana pool to make sure you have Ford Spirits up, cold snap, and sunstrike. And speaking of which, he goes in with two of those. He's looking for the kill. The sunstrike will be sidestepped. Super. Getting a bit of uh, evasion on the high... I think he actually dodged one attack from low ground to high ground, which, at the end of the day, probably saves his life there. Did have the fairy fire as well, so... He tanked that last right click, so I, I take that back. It probably didn't save his life. He was probably going to be fine regardless. Arcane Rune's bottom as well, but no one scouted it out yet. It will be the four minute rune spawning soon, so Super will be okay to stand in lane here. But yeah, the Ember Spirit is deceptively weak early on to this physical damage. So if a couple right clicks in from the Forge Spirits and the pure damage coming out from he's, the uh, Sunstrike could certainly kill him off. He's fine though. He's outsguessing yeah. the Invoker, and yeah. this is very much a. It's an invoker favorite matchup, mm -hmm. without a doubt. Um, and like you can, there are ways where you can try and maybe like come close to breaking even on CS if you play it well and Super has played this well. But invoker, uh, yeah, should not be getting out farmed here. Now it is pretty much even now as this next creep wave meets, but very much a, a good showing from Super here in mid. Yeah, as we're accustomed to seeing, and a small bit of help as well from Q, just throwing in those creeps towards the mid lane. That's true. That's actually See, a, a, perhaps unfair to Fran to say, oh, he's lost the lane, he shouldn't win. There has been this Chen presence mm -hmm. in the mid lane. Over towards bot, Yao gonna be able to uh, make it out of range of, of dogfights, his magic missile, and has his treants in front of him to keep him safe. He's, he's got phase boost, so any fights, like he's ready to TP in. If they wanna push down top lane, if they wanna go in it for a kill in the invoker, Nature's Prophet can be active. Yeah, certainly so, and they're going to have a gyrocopter who's active as well fairly soon. He's only about half a level away here, 300 experience from that level 6. Mid lane, super going to go in. He's going to get cold snapped up. The chains will connect onto friend. He's going to use the spirit bomb to jump forward and still has the flame guard ticking through. There's a TP in from Yao. Guess is wrong with the treants, but they get the vision. And Fran going to be brought down, and now all of a sudden the cavalry has shown up in this mid lane. Treants, Chen creeps. Really the nice aggression. They would Super was just gonna lack the damage to get the solo kill. Even with the triple aggressive remnant, he didn't quite have the damage to get the kill. But Yao's TP in is there, so a phase boot Nature's Prophet shows up and they get a kill and a T1 tower in the mid lane of all lanes. Yeah. This is huge to get sub yeah. ten minutes and it's sub six minutes right now. Great down. rotations coming in from Nature's Prophet and then the Chen shows up at the well, I'd say right time he could have maybe even come early for the kill, but um, it, it's it's all going pretty well. Q a bit under level as far as being mm -hmm. a jungler, but that's because he's continuing. Like he's been help, focusing helping the mid lane. Right. And that, so much of that is because Ember Spirit has a mismatch against Invoker, so he's kept his creeps mid and hasn't been able to jungle as fast as he'd like to. Yeah, and with the other side going for greed, they certainly can afford this. Uh, Yao gonna TP towards mid lane. He's got no wex for the ghost walk. Yeah, Searing Chains will try to bring down Yao in the meantime. He has the Boar Slow, but they bring down the Forge Spirit, so... Beastmaster so close to level 6, he just needs one... One creep's worth of experience. Then he can look for that first rotation around the map, I imagine. There we go, hits level 6. Probably needs to heal up a little bit, but the gank yeah. coming towards the top lane. Ven's looking to TP into defend. Jug, has he got a TP? Not yet. He's got to be picking one up soon, I imagine. He's got Omni Slash at the ready, takes one more creep. This has got to be a TP pickup if he wants to fight, and there we go. He sells his Tengus, picks up a TP, he's ready to go. Volker more than likely going to TP into this one. He actually going to elect to TP towards the Tier 2. This is a heavy commitment. They TP to the Tier 2 so that like, Jug can TP and have a fast TP on the Tier 1, and they'll have like instantly five heroes there. Mm -hmm. But and CDC, I think, realized what's going on. They TP out back bottom. Although, with that said, it's a TP scroll, so his teleportation is still available if he wants to re-emerge at the top lane. If he can get level 6 before the fight, it's going to make a big difference. Yeah, and he, he deals with the push as well, and Fran can always contribute via the Sunstrike on top of the Primal Roar, but it looks like underneath their sentry, they do have a smoke here for top lane, and we'll I, expend it. They knew it. they were there, though. This Dire Observer was actually much deeper. Yeah, mm -hmm. they maybe didn't see this. They, they may have been far. They were north of the sentry, but they saw three heroes grouped up with a smoke, so I feel like that should be something that CDC can predict. And they have a call down as well. It's not the most ideal target. That three seconds stun early on is going to be nice. With the surge through Rabbit, though, they'll be able to run off. Now the TP's coming through the call down. First missile will connect onto Super. Hawk is there as well. I believe they're still going to get kills here. The Ember Spirit's going in for falling you on the, the Darkseer line. 
bit too far away, and Super actually out of mana. Without the mana, he can't actually get another Searing Chains off, but the Nature's Prophet will help out. Gets the Sprout into the Impale. Arcane Room will be waiting for the bottle of Super. So they get the one kill in the darks here. I mean, Rabbit just remaining calm and collected. Uh, he, he sees the, yeah. the charge coming from the east. He just phases to the left and doesn't let Beastmaster get in range for a roar. On top yeah. of that, it was also nighttime, so they, they struggled to get vision for the roar as well. Yeah, then the Beastmaster are completely taken out of the fray. The calldown has to zone him out to the south, and they isolate the other two remaining heroes, able to get one of them, the more valuable one, in fact, in falling used darks here. So, gank thwarted. They'll have a call down up fairly soon. Things looking pretty good. They're going to pressure the bottom lane tower now for the Radiant side, and it doesn't look like, in terms of the TP situation, they're able to mount a defense, but not the biggest loss for them. Uh, eight, nine minutes in, and that their offlane tower is going down. They'd like to kind of find a trade at top, but they focus so much emphasis on mid that they took the mid tier one tower, and there's been no real damage or pressure done at top. And it's also always hard to take a Daxis tower because he is so good at keeping this lane pushed out. But the way to take his tower is to kill him, and that's what the plan's going to be. They smoke up, looking to wrap around from oh, the behind. We'll see them. Yeah. Tower's there, the TP from the jug, the impale to lead things off with a call, then they should be able to get this kill. Searing Chains comes out as well. They get one. Yuno needs to find an Omni Slash Tracker, but there's so many Treants here. Instead, he's going to go for the defensive blade here. I heard a Sunstrike. I believe he was looking for the line. Didn't latch it. I can only imagine. And Fran taken out now. This Invoker, 0 3, having a very rough game. Super. May just remnant down and TP home. And, uh, yep, that's going to be the plan. They take the tier one. And possibly even consider pressuring this tier two tower now here in the top lane. They've got great vision because of this Observer Ward that does. Make that ease of pushing. Mm -hmm. Seemed like a little bit of a half ass commitment from IGV there as well. They didn't bring in the Vengeance, and it, maybe if Yuno goes for the Omni, uh, knowing his Invoker was coming in, that they're able to get something done. But the defensive Blade Fury, I mean, considering his skill build, which is normal, is going to take away so much of their damage potential in the fights. And maybe just going for the Omni to keep safe and then the Blade Fury after a jump forward, though, from Super. Call down there. slightly off again, though. I think they will get super, so they still get the kill, and most importantly, defend a tower while taking a tower. So even though they don't get the cooldown they were after, it was very much, it puts IG Vitality in position when they're backing off, and you still get a catch just because you've got Ember Spirit. Super has truly fulfilled his role as the initiator. It's like, okay, these cooldowns aren't landing, doesn't matter. It's It forces IG Vitality back. Yeah, and he's sitting on uh, enough gold to pick up his boots of travel if... That's yeah. what he elects to grab at this point, so it can continue to get active. I think so. He's going to have it at such an early time, and it allows him to... Then you've got a Nature's Prophet and an Ember who are both global. Oh, top lane calling you. Caught out by a rotation, and we'll go down to the Rocket Barrage. This is just IG Vitality falling apart. They had such a strong game, too, and even game one, they looked a lot more solid than this, but CDC just pummeling them here. Yeah, it felt like in game one... A lot of their team fight was on the back of that Quaswex Invoker for Fran, and he's tried to join fights with this Invoker, but seems to get himself in the front lines and just doesn't have the Tornado to bail himself out as he does when he's Quaswex, and he's getting bursted down pretty quickly, it feels, in most of these engagements, not able to dish out him enough of his damage, which is very potent if he can uh, get the, the backup and the disable behind him, but still no swap this on dogfights as Ventral Spirit and the, the crazy thing is you say like there's no been no swap, but there's also been there's been no Lion Finger, there's been no Chen Hand of God, so mm -hmm. suddenly CDC, they've been crushing the game so far and they're gonna have two new tools to work with, the finger and the hand of God, the global heal. So this game gets a whole lot more difficult now for IT Vitality. They are gonna look to bring down a pretty it's important target kill. here, but yes. Does he get so hard to get that roar off. The only way you really get it off is if he hugs like the tree line on the left, and you can use it from fog. But as, a, as like at nighttime, as an ember player, like that's just like a, a position. That, that's bad position. Like at least questionable positioning if you yeah. allow that to happen. You should put yourself somewhere where if a gank's coming your way, you're gonna see it, and they can't stun you from fog. Now Yao gonna deal with top lane as well. So falling, you're not gonna find much of a trade, and the smoke. Smoke attempt thwarted, 7 to nil, 12 and a half minutes in, and Dark's starting to wipe. Yeah. This is <laughs> starting to feel like a, bit like a deja vu from the previous death on him. They'll get the T1 mid tower at least, and I think that's what they thought. They're defending Q, gonna go down. Actually, uses the hand of God. Thinking he could save himself, perhaps yeah. somewhat foolishly. 
Uh, yeah, would have saved him if it weren't for the sun strike, but always got to count count that. I don't Take know that. about saving no. him. There, there's a jug with phase drums. You could like, just chase him down. So I think even without uh, the sun strike, it, it was optimistic to say the least. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> Yao caught out in the die jungle and with the raw okay. usage, they're gonna get that kill. Mid lane. Oh, well, your side there. Fran goes goes down. Dogfight's trying to TP himself home, oh, but the burst damage is gonna be enough. They don't even need the TP cancel. The max level rocket barrage is more than enough. And yeah, they're just, I mean, taking what they want at this point. They they end up losing the nature's profit, but he has more than enough at this uh, for this point in the game. And they've got the Chen army towards Roche. It's not going to be the easiest Roche. They do have the magic damage toolkit from Rabbit. They've got a set of drums as well. So actually, this will be taken, and they certainly are aware that the Radiant are not in a position to contest this. Yeah. at this point so they'll throw up super on the high ground one of the more elusive targets and he'll be able to just shove the bot lane in and ensure that no one is encroaching upon the pit and he knows there's no roll so roll oh man just as importantly he also sees beastmaster at top but uh the initiation and catch is just not there unless they've got the roll and even then it's like no we, as we saw bottom lane it's no guarantees he's often going to be able to get himself away so a just picked up rabbit gonna take it on the gyrocopter and you gotta imagine this is going to spell aggression to come out from CDC yeah. now with an Aegis in hand. Yeah, 2k gold onto Super as well. He can pick up at least a, comp a Perseverance, um, if not, maybe even a Crystallis to go forward, but uh, Blink item. items. Yeah, Blink online, and Chen has mech as well once he can use the Courier, so. That the was a crazy early Blink on the line. Item timings are there right now. Actually, mm -hmm. you're going to see a Shadow Blade from Yao, it looks like. He's picked up a, a Claymore, so something a bit different going to force out i mean again this hurts the the rating economy because they're going to see this and be like man we're going to buy all this detection now centuries dust just for a nature's profit um once they have the necro 3 maybe they have a pseudo answer to him but mm -hmm. uh, it gives them an escape tool an initiation tool and it's also just always good right click damage so i, I quite like the pick up here for, for yeah yeah it seems like it, it certainly can work and he's the one kind of dealing with the lanes uh, as the rest of his five men assembles alongside super so Getting him some scouting information for the Ember Spirit can certainly do work. And jumping forward, they are going to find Super. Necro unit's going to be popped, but probably just going to be fed here. The Roar comes out onto Yao, and Yao, it's a little low. The Hand of God will ensure that he's kept safe. And Super going to at least find one of the Necro Creeps. 300 gold going his way. And they do know the Roar is on the sidelines. Only 20 seconds, though, that the Beastmaster is down. So won't be able to get an immediate objective, but still continuing to choke out this Radiant lineup and from the map. very well, like as far as like <laughs> the choke's going, like everyone's getting like pushed back, constantly going down, except for the Jug, the one who's managed to kind of elude the grip of CDC. And anytime CDC is going for the push, he's always on another side of the map, counter pushing, forcing those TPs back. CDC haven't been able to go for like a, let's group up as five, let's take all the towers on the map, let's push high ground with Aegis because of the way this Jug is split pushing. But uh, at some point that's gonna end. They do get the hex off though onto dogfights and eventual was, uh, spirit. Perhaps looking for a, a bigger kill in someone like the Invoker or Jug as they were heading towards that bottom lane, but running into a Venge, they'll take it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I imagine take out this tier 2 mid tower before they have to TP back and deal with the Jug split push at bottom. Yeah, Juno a little bit further away from this tier 2 than is the dire lineup, and they'll be able to take this without contest from their opponents and super can be able to return to the mid lane after dealing with this split push that was top yeah good point you can just have ember deal with the split push and well speaking of the top invis up no detection once again the reactions i think that was the, the first time he only recently picked it up so perhaps they didn't see that he'd completed it yet but they should have known it was coming based on the claymore earlier now with the two spot spotted top they're going to engage at bottom super picks up the healing ward can they actually kill off you know here he's already low no way he can go for a blade fury tp or there is a way he can go for it but he's not going to be successful with the initial damage burst onto him he it was kind of his only play available but they did enough damage that he wasn't going to have time to get the tp off yeah, TP in, TPing in the gyro and, and stopping the push well worth bringing down the juggernaut there. Yep. As you mentioned earlier, he was kind of the only threat from IG's side and him dying is, is pretty big deal. They don't really find much of a trade elsewhere just with Yao and Super being so mobile for C deck, they've been able to deal with most of the split push attempts from yep. IGV. And right now, even with the TP back from Gyrocopter, it doesn't really necessarily 
prevent them pushing with Aegis. They've still got a minute and a half left, so they can push out these lanes, leave Nature's Prophet top, and their lineup deals very well with Split Push. Yao, 20 mm -hmm. second cooldown TP. Ember Spirit can TP back, leave a remnant, and then be instantly back in the fight. So the Split Push is only really a minor inconvenience. It's not something that's actually stopping them from pushing. Yeah, and they're still finding the key picks when they need them. Invisibility Rune up onto Super. And he's got most of his Battle Fury ready as well. Just needs about 1050 gold uh, for that broadsword. So see the Gyromanta oh, now. This is uh, picked up very often against the Omni Slash of the Juggernaut. Just helps mm. uh, split the damage between those Manta illusions. And in some ways, it acts as a decent ish pushing item. You can. Use the illusions a little bit, but you, there's so many spells you can get out of here. You can disjoin it. Vengeful stun. If you see Beastmaster walking in, you can pop it and make it hard for him to be off a raw. So it's just going to make IG Vitality's life a little bit trickier. Yeah, Rabbit will pop the Manta and look to help with the push. Got They've it. got. He tries to find the blink. And two heroes split pushing cop. They get the searing chains off onto the Vengeful Spear. Vacuum forward. He's going to find two into the wall as well, but Shadow Blade's there they're for They're on the high ground at the top. They're the actually, top they're gonna push incredibly fast. There's no Glyph here. This is actually a problem for CDC. All of a sudden, they have not defended their lane. So the TP cooldown, Rabbit goes in. He's got Aegis, not the best raw target, and they're gonna lose both. Ember slices and dices. Takes out Invoker Beastmaster. So they trade T3 towers. For IG Vitality, that was amazing until they lost those two heroes. If they just lost yeah. like Beastmaster, I'd say that's like a good trade for them, but losing yeah. both Beastmaster and Invoker, um, they do buy time for the ages to expire, so it's still not like a, a terrible loss for IG Vitality in the sense like they held on, they didn't lose a lane of Rax. Um, they're still in this game, but yeah, economically they're not looking fantastic. Yeah, Super has a broadsword on top of his Battle Fury now at this point. Did not have the Battle Fury for that return home, so would have even been able to cleave down those heroes quicker. So. But as you mentioned, delaying out the Aegis is going to be a pretty big deal for IGV side. However, it does seem like C-Deck are ready to ramp up the aggression once again. Garter, the only hero who's not basically assembled with the five man, but they're not waiting for that Q just yet. Super's been trapped in by the spawn of the creeps and he will have to remnant back. He'll drop another one down though and bottle up and look to continue to going forward. You know, gonna take a lot of cleave damage as he blade furies forward More and now the summons. melee racks. Just like how you can't omni slash into this. Yeah, you've got a battle fury, but there's so many units with the Chen. Chen, another hero that's always been such a good matchup against the Juggernaut. And blink, finger, down goes your Venge. Guardian, get away from your teammates. Don't give him that Venge. Or you're just going to try Blade Fury his way in to delay this push. But Melee Rex has already been taken out. Now the Omni Slash comes out. He's found an opening to use it without the creeps coming into play. He takes out the line, does some good damage elsewhere. And now the cooldown being dropped. Rabbit says, yeah, I'll poke at your tier force. Wait a second. That's getting a bit ahead of myself. Let's get this range Rex. There's other lanes of Rex to take. <laughs> who need to, he was uh... trying to flack onto the Invoker. Oh, but yeah. That looked, that looked really funny. Uh, to it me looked for well. a second. He's like, let's throw him, guys. We've got this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, with the games we've seen today, it wouldn't be all that far fetched. But uh, they do take the melee or the lane of Rex, excuse me, in the mid lane. And 16 to 3, it certainly feels like the score is kind of indicative of the state of the game. Still, you know, is farming very well, but. On the other side of things, they've got three cores who are farming nearly the same, if, if not better. So Crystal is completed now onto Super. And they've got Rabbit's full Manta, as you mentioned. Ogre Club on top, soon to be more than likely that BKB. Maybe an SNY, but more than likely the BKB, and they look to end yeah. this one. Yeah, I think already having the, the Manta style almost mm -hmm. guaranteed a BKB. Just then you don't have to worry about any of the Invoker damage output outside of the physical from the Forge Spirit's Alacrity at that stage, so... They have enough protection against the Omni Slash from the Treants to the Chen Creeps to the heals from the Chen. That seems like they're okay. This this Ags from Chen is going to be such a big upgrade. It's just crazy to see a Chen like with this farm. He's only level 8. I look at Chen and I'm like, man, he's not having the best game. He's level 8, but then I see his items and I'm just like, okay, Chen's doing fine. The Rax money kicking in uh, and just being involved in some of these kills has been more than enough for him. Smoke calldowns have been perhaps a bit underwhelming thus far, but if they it could connect on a good one here if they get the, the vision beforehand. Carter does drop the ward up on the cliff. Not yeah, this find is like the now. And normally you don't use a defensive ward like this when you're the ones who are leading mm -hmm. and winning the game, but this is like a deal with the split push kind of ward. Oh, oh they're they're the they find Jug. The oh down. no, he could be in trouble. The finger came up as well just in time. Super now chasing. He's got an arcane rune. Good luck getting away from this guy. Have they got any TP cancels? Lion, oh, he didn't have the mana for an impale, and 
Not sure he had a good escape there. Fran will TP himself out. Yao won't even reveal, as he had no way to cancel that TP. He was hoping maybe for Garda to be there, but again, no mana for the Impale or the Hex. We'll just... They can go towards the bot lane. Yeah, and Super will do so. Where's Yao? He's going to need his Nature's Prophet alongside him. There's still three heroes off. Little Super a has a Roar and a Necro 3. They do get the chain. He does get the chains off onto Little Super, though, and that'll bring him down to about 60% HP still. Can he be able to use that, utilize that roar? But now with Yao behind him with the Orchid, completed up. Another and the searing Chenar. chains. There's an Orchid to follow it up. He gets the ensnare off, but luckily there's a swap to save him. That Orchid won't do any damage up yet. He popped the Orchid when it was already low HP, so there was no damage amplification kicking in. The Venge will have to go down for this. The Necro books have been summoned, though. He needs to get some value out of this. This is a Necro 3. It's really their, one of their major sources of damage output. Looks sad to say it. We'll see another Orchid come out. He won't get off the Omni Slash here. You know, is there enough damage to bring him down? The call down Rocket Barrage. You know, getting low. He will fall. No buyback. Invoker goes down to the Ember Spirit Slider Fist. He goes remnanting in, gets another, and they just demolish IG Vitality in their Three, own two, base. Two. Force the GG. The dream is real. Absolutely. After last game. You know, this is a sign. This is CDC saying, we left the Aegis in the Rose Pit last game. <laughs> you know? That is, that is somewhat of a blunder, but yeah, they end this one in very convincing fashion. And you mentioned it. I mean, there's just the litany of creeps up on the high ground. I don't think we saw an Omni Slash in the last three or four engagements just because the situations were so terrible to jump it forward. And then it's unreliable to where you end up, as you know, on that juggernaut after the Omni Slash. So really well played overall, well drafted in fact by C deck, but um, giving them the attention, sacrificing their Chen a little bit early on to super seemed to really help them out. 6-0-13 he ends up on his Ember Spirit out of the mid lane. Well, well that does it for uh, IG Vitality in this series, but they're gonna have to hop right into our next. So they're gonna have to shake it off and take on E Home next. So. From one tough opponent to the next, I mean, CDC to me, a team with their new roster that really looks a bit revitalized, but even just on paper is going to be a scary threat moving forward. Ehome, another story where you've got some amazing talent. They put together this team that they think is going to work, and I'm looking forward to seeing Ehome in action. I, don't, I think they've maybe already, they have, were meant to have a game against Wings. This may be their first match with their new roster. I'm not sure on that one. Uh, they're playing in some other qualifiers as well, but it's going to be one of their one of their early matches with their new roster. So if you want to check out uh, Ice Ice Ice, Fenrir, and a few of the other new guys on this E-Home squad, this is the, the place to do it. Um, but we're going to say goodbye for now. Uh, I'm Gods from Grand Summit. You can follow me on Twitter at BTS Gods. And my co-cast, a big thanks for joining me, uh, MRP, or Rage as he's also known. You can follow him on at Twitter on uh, MRP Dota. So... Any any final words, MRP? Oh, appreciate appreciate you having me. It's been it's, it's been great. Uh, I don't I don't get to cast Chinese Dota all that often because I'm East Coast, but East Coast North America, yeah, anyways. How, how you? I mean, I'm I'm jet lagged. I just got got back from Australia. I can't believe you're awake at this hour. Yeah, seven seven forty five in the morning. But anytime there's base races to be had, right? We got to get on stream. So, yeah, thank you again, of course, for having me, guys. I, I hope you enjoyed the cast. But if not, uh, you know where to flame me. Don't worry, you know how to flame me as well. Straight to Reddit, not Twitter. Reddit. <laughs> Leave all your flames on Reddit. We don't want to see that shit on Twitter, but uh, make sure to make as many flamey Reddit threads as possible. Um, we'll see you guys later. I'll be passing the stream off, and uh, we'll have eHome versus IG Vitality coming back up. So just refresh your streams if nothing shows after a few minutes, but uh, it should be coming right back up. We'll see you guys then.